So it was about three months ago that I left uh, Ithaca, New York, here. Yeah. And the first day I came down to Columbus, Ohio, where I first met up with the Secular Student Alliance, who are a very impressive organization, growing at about 20% a year. And that's also where I first met Ashley Paramore, um, and we did the fire eating together. And the next day I was all the way over um, around here somewhere. And by the next morning, um, the Ashley had hooked me up with the Westboro Baptist Church in Topeka. So I did the interview in the morning. God gave Jesus. you up No, to. you don't get to read this because you said you don't believe it. So why are you reading it? Because I think this is endorsed. I think Jesus endorses homosexuality. And by that evening, I was all the way across here, came down this way, and got lost around the back of Colorado Springs, only to come out through this fantastic little tribe out Crippled Creek. Um, anyway, after that, because I was anonymous at the time, I went down to a science conference in Tullyride, Tullyride here, um, where I was for a few days. And then after that, I ploughed on, and in a day, got to Las Vegas, where um, there was TAM going on. TAM also growing at a formidable rate, growing at about 15% a year. Um, and I met Chrissy. Um, Mr. Dirty, and a load of really other useful contacts in LA. Um, after that, I was having a bit of trouble with the brakes, so I came down to LA to get the brakes sorted. And whilst in LA, I also that's why I did the Ray Comfort interview. Wow. A German officer has got a gun pointed at your head. He wants you to get into a bulldozer and drive it forward. Mm -hmm. In front of the bulldozer is a pit. <coughs> Excuse me. In front of the bulldozers is a pit with 300 Jews in it. They've just been shot. Some of them are still alive. He wants you to bury them alive. If you don't do what he says, he's going to shoot you to death and do it himself. Would you drive the bulldozer forward? And don't say I don't know. If it were me, um, in my, if, if I had the brain that I have at present, you know, I'm just teleported instantly back there, I'd give him the finger and tell him to go fuck himself. Can't say that. Put it another way. Um, I would I would give him the finger. No, you can't say that either. Okay. Just say I would say no and I'd die. Um, yeah, there are there are worse things than death. Interview and um, I actually met up with Tam Pam Pamula while in LA, which was actually really interesting. Um, and despite actually being in the LA area, I actually went out and came back. I never quite managed to hook up with Mr. Dirty. We were meant to be doing something together, and I'm really sorry I didn't get that done. But I did spend uh, a night or two out the back of the Sierra Nevada here, um, and that's why I did the exploding sodium, exploding potassium um, before, oh, and some of the whole sky time lapse for coming all the way up to Oakland, where the National Center for Science and Education is based. And I can tell you without hyperbole that they are a formidable organization to the point if if I had money to funnel anywhere, uh, NCSE is where it would go. However, today there's another form of junk science which is uh, trying to worm its way into public science classrooms. Uh, that has to do with uh, climate change and uh, denial. Communist corporations, elitist politicians and reckless scientists have contributed to creating a phony crisis. Scientists are fudging data to make their case for global warming. There's no making a deal with these vampires. I mean, this is a greedy... I mean, folks, I'm not trying to demonize them. And this is, this is not anecdotal. This, this is scientific temperature research surveys. We are actually cooling. NCSE is now taking this up as a, a critical issue in our own mission, partly because we know that climate affects everyone and because we know the decisions that we make today are going to affect generations to come. Yeah, so I spent a couple of days in with um, the folks at NCSE, touching base about various things, before coming all the way out back to Mono Lake, which is where NASA initially claimed they'd found <coughs> alien life, although they seemed to have backed off on the claims a bit now, or non-DNA-based life. Anyway, so, but they have fantastic brine shrimp there. <laughs> Anyway. 
Yeah, Ryan Shrimp. Ryan Shrimp and Mono Lake. Oh, if I still kept to see horses, they would absolutely go ballistic for this. And it was also on the way back that I had my little run-in with a mountain lion. Just interesting. Beautiful green eyes, though. Emerald, beautiful glowing emerald eyes. So after that, I came over and went all the way up the coast on Highway 1 to the coastal redwoods, which are phenomenal. Uh, one of my favourite places in the world is the coastal redwoods of Northern California before coming over to Lassen. And Lassen's where I did the time lapse of, of Uranus. Um, and after that, I... So whilst in this region, that, that's when I first got the plane fully functional. Before Magneto, acceptance of Magneto, supreme overlord of all Earthicans. If I, Magneto, at your peril. So yeah, pretty much the most awesome headset ever, or base station, should I say. And the plane has now been upgraded to take a HD camera. Uh, so down here I've got um, visibility on what's going on in the plane. Um, and up on the top, I've got the two high gain antennas, one which needs a little bit of sorting. The receiver, something to record on the base station, and of course the stuff that feeds straight through to the video goggles. So I can pilot the whole thing from here. But by this time the supernova was actually going off and I was actually clued into it by, by Ashley. Um, so I actually spent a few days in this sort of area here taking pictures of the supernova. Um, and also at Crater Lake. And then it turns out, so you've got the coastal range here, it's a little drier in this valley. Then you've got the Cascades, these are all volcanoes here. And it's really dry around the back. So here's Bend and here's about Pine Mountain, and that's where I did Supernova Live from. Sliding along against the power supply. Right. Now. Oh! Can you tell me which one is the Supernova? There it is. Can you see it? Supernova Live! Fantastic! And after Supernova Live, I came back down to Mount Thielsen, where I didn't quite make it to the summit before playing all the way up to Fort Catsop. Fort Catsop is where I first started making the uh, Why America is Screwed video. Um, before, and it was almost full, full, full moon by this time, so I couldn't really take any more pictures of the supernova. So I stopped off at Mount St. Helens. I wanted to go up it, I really did, but I couldn't get a permit. Um, and I, so I stopped off in Portland on the way where I met. Uh, Ashley, who was in the area fundraising in Atheist Gal, and stopped off at Mount Rainier, flew the plane there, and then I met up with Ashley again in Seattle, where we really tried to get into the Discovery Institute, but couldn't quite make it. Brenda, ben. Yeah, I'm just passing through and saw you guys were in town. I was wondering if I could step in and like pick up some literature. Well, uh, we actually only take. Uh, uh, we just walked across town and tried to get into the Discovery Institute. So how did that go? It just didn't work quite so well. So what we were really interested in getting was their opinion on the academic freedom. And apparently they didn't have the academic freedom to actually let us in the door. So they only, their, their, their stance on academic freedom is by appointment only. And up there, up there, there is a, a flying saucer that's parked. Yeah, actually, I learned. We, we should we should have the academic freedom to teach the controversy of whether the space needle is in fact a parked flag source. You know, I know it is because I actually uh, saw it on Men in Black. And, and yeah, and there are books about it. There, there are more books on on UFOs than there are on intelligent design. Not a proven, not, not actually a fact, but it's something that I believe. And because I believe it, I think that we ought to have the academic freedom to teach these things in class. Well, well, Thunder Dog, I'm glad to see you have such great faith. Gotta have faith. Faith, the new stupid. 